The media aide to Governor Odom, Emmanuel of Aquaibam State, Reverend Richard Peters, and the senator representing Aquaibam North East Uyo Senatorial District at the National Assembly, Ubong Basi Albert, popularly known as Oba, have disagreed following the revelation by the governor of River State, Nyensong Wike, that President Muhammad Buari had paid 13 percent derivation arrears since 1999 to all governors of Niger Delta states. Senator Akban, who is the governorship candidate of the Young P Progressives Party, YPP, during a war to war campaign in East Etam Itu local government area of Akwaibam State, said Wiki's disclosure has validated his exposition that Governor Emmanuel received 280 billion naira from the federal government without accounting for it. Oba regretted that despite the huge sums of money received by the governor, the state has nothing to boast about. However, Governor Emmanuel's media aide Peters in a press in a statement tagged Governor Emmanuel still saddling on excellence on Saturday described the allegations as ridiculous and defamatory. Meanwhile, Governor Wike in River State today said the issue of 13% derivation is being blown out of proportion. They say, oh, I have caused trouble. I say, what is the trouble? But they say, oh, the Niger Delta State shall account for their money. <laughs> I never said so to anybody, but all I said, people should thank Buhari for me, for giving me money to do the project, that's what I said. If you will interpret it in a different way, it's your own uh, business. Is it wrong to thank somebody who has done well for you? I don't understand why people play politics every time. We have joined us to discuss the promises of Governor Nyesong Wiki of River State, a public affairs analyst, Opwanabo Nkotari, and a political analyst, Professor Sani Fage. Good evening, Professor and uh, Mr. Taria. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Taria. Good evening. Yes. Now we have to just. Is the compound name. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, Mr. Nabo Nkotaria is a, you know, a public affairs analyst. And we'll just start off with you. You know, we witnessed our Governor Nyesong Wikis promising the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, you know, logistic support whenever he goes to campaign in River State, you know, four days ago. And also he did the same to the presidential candidate of the new Nigerian People's Party, NNPP, uh, today. The big question, begging for answer right now, is he playing politics with these statements? Thank you, my brother. Uh, first and foremost, let me say this. You, you just heard this, the denier concerning the 13% derivation. When he said, all he said was, we are really released to him. Meanwhile, on Saturday, and even before Saturday, he said, to all the Niger Delta the uh, state government. That's what he said. And they call the they refer to themselves as integrity group. You now tell me if that in itself is integrity. Well, having said this, you talked about the issue of logistics to uh, P2B and to Papa and so. That alone will also tell you it is the voice of a disgruntled, drowning, frenetic man that is aware and scared of approaching his political nadaya. We are going to pledge logistic support to P2B on the Labour Party. We are also going to pledge logistic support to Kwapasu. So who exactly are you going to support in the forthcoming presidential elections? Because if you talk of logistic support, now a lot of people might argue that what he meant was, as the chief security officer of the state, he was going to ensure a campaign-free uh, uh, atmosphere, uh, sorry, a uh, um, trouble-free atmosphere for the presidential candidate. But the truth is, if you have to go to any state to campaign, going by the Electoral Act, the police and INEC are the principal party you must inform, you have to advise them, and they are going to ensure that you have a heat free campaign. You might have a courtesy if I'm the governor of the state. And even if the governor will have to provide logistics, it has to be true the commission of police. Because the governor himself 
belongs to a political party, and it is presumed that being a member of a political party, you are already biased. Now, in this particular instance, while the governor of the United States of which is saying to P2B, and at the same time saying the same thing to Kwakwansu, is to one, incense article, and two, also to make article jealous. This same governor that is talking of logistic support for presidential candidates is the same governor that is hamstringing the campaign of political parties in winter state. And don't also forget, for those who probably would have forgotten, is the same governor who had threatened that he will see how the Asiku supporters who are in Abuja will come to Portaco to campaign. In other words, he is going to frustrate their campaigns. He has already frustrated the campaign of other political parties, first and foremost, by being a medicine in Taroka, by dragging the other political parties to court so that the court will, will disqualify them. He has come up with all kinds of draconian executive orders. You have to pay five billion naira, non-refundable to schools if you have to use the school premises. You cannot have campaign offices in urban areas and even in the rural areas without the premature of the state government. These we are these laws we are non existent in twenty fourteen when the government himself campaigned. Okay, let, let's, let's even when he was almost denied the use of the stadium. I was part of that team and I know what happened. Okay. We first and foremost into that stadium because we had the security on our side. Okay, let's this same is now coming up with draconian laws to frustrate the campaign of other political parties. And let me state this clearly that this is ultra violent the electoral act and the constitution. Because when it comes to conduct of elections, it is within the exclusive prison and rally of the independent national electoral commission. Okay, Mr Mr. And Taria. The reason, a sorry my brother, that one that I'll go around of the one second. Now he come up with a reason that is rationally inexplicable that when they go into the schools, they might definitely the count the campuses or whatever and will allow the state. Did we not use the schools? All you need to do is to get and show that the security of presence or whoever I make order is not to let them ensure that the campuses are kept the way they were before the political parties went in. You cannot detect how political parties are going to campaign in your state. That is the exclusive pleasure of INEC. And the parties will have to order from the police. That is what the electoral law states. Anything contrary to that is we'll draconian. Anything contrary to that is tantamount to Okay. Mr. Taria, we'll come back to you. Let's just shift attention now to uh, Professor Ofage. Professor Ofage, are you there? Yeah, I am. Do you agree with everything that uh, Mr. Taria is saying? And do you think he's just a stink to the PDPs? Is he out of place? I mean, talking about the uh, governor of, you know, River State, yes, on Wiki, is he out of place to say he will provide logistic support for the NNPP and, of course, the LP, Peter B? Um, I don't agree with him 100%. There are areas that uh, I quite agree with him, and there are areas that I don't agree with him. So now, if we look with. at what uh, Wike said, uh, we, we can say that he's talking, you know, with both sides of his uh, mouth. In other words, he's talking uh, two issues at, uh, at different times, or at the same time. First, when we talk of uh, providing logistics uh, support uh, to LP party, now to NMPP party, I think that one you can visualize it within the context of the electoral act uh, or electoral law, uh, which uh, prohibits any party or any government uh, from, you know, not allowing a level playing ground to 
uh, each party or to every party. So I think that we can see it is trying to be clever by half by saying that he's going to do that, which means openly he has not contradicted the electoral uh, law. Uh, on, on that regard. Secondly, when he's talking, and this is where I agree with uh, the last speaker, that when he's talking about uh, giving them uh, a support, I think he's trying to slight uh, the PDP. Uh, PDP. Uh, all along, you know, he is t trying to be a typical Nigerian politician uh, who believes in democracy only when except his own interests. Where it doesn't, uh, he can do whatever to bring it down. Okay. Uh, literally, there is this uh, PRG mentality. Bring him down uh, so that, you know, since he doesn't get it, so he is trying to do uh, whatever he thinks uh, will bring the party down in his own place. Okay, let's look at the other part of this, you know, with the whole 13% derivation that's been everywhere. Everybody has been talking about it. Uh, is Governor Yeson Wike a hero, you know, by announcing and thanking uh, President Muhammad Buhari in public for giving the 13% uh, derivation money be owed to the governors of the South South since 1999? Should we describe him as a hero for coming out? Because nobody has, you know, come out openly to talk about this. Uh, to some extent he is, but you have to contextualize the, the situation why he blew up the whistle now. Uh, all alone, uh, you know, this is not the first time that we are having this issue with uh, derivation. None of the leaders uh, came out to say that uh, this issue has been on the ground and nobody uh, did a lot of things to justify uh, the, you know, allocation. Instead, they are manipulating their own population that uh, these things uh, they have been dominated and so on, which creates a, a sort of kind, uh, hard feeling in the minds of the people. But now that he comes out, I think he is blowing the whistle uh, so that those who are sitting on the fence uh, will have to come out to uh, say something. Because after all, I think um, Wiki it seems that uh, maybe the end of his uh, political career has come. Uh, so since uh, on that ground, I think he has to come out as a champion. Uh, at least that will endear him to uh, some people, at least within his own state, while at the same time uh, blackmailing uh, those who uh, kept quiet. So that is why we are likely going to see a lot of debate, whether it has been uh, given or not. I think this is just a tip of the iceberg. Thank you so much. There. Let's uh, move to uh, Mr. Nkotaria. Mr. Nkotaria, you know, a lot of people have been talking about this whole 13% derivation. Just in case you're listening, I mean, before, I uh, mean, the layman out there, 13% derivation fund, you know, comes from the Federation, a revenue to oil producing communities through uh, the state, you know, governments as enshrined in um, section 162, uh, subsection 2 of the Nigerian Constitution. Now, he has come out to talk about the 13%, you know, being received uh, by, I uh, mean, the President Buari giving since 1999 the money being owed to the governors of the South-South, you know. Uh, is he a sort of a hero at this moment, Mr. Nkotaria? Well, my brother, uh, why, why we will not go into the veracity or appropriateness of uh, that claim, that assertion? If you look at the response, it's even on your screen, the response from the uh, Apparel State Government. I will describe it as a pleasant disclosure done for intensely bad reasons. I say pleasant because it is going to let the public know, it will be to the public know the fact that the federal government released X amount. And for governors, who believe they are going to feather or line their pockets with that amount, the masses will now hold them accountable, like it's been done already in some states. But I said for intensely bad reasons, because the governor is not on terms with practically the South South governors. And so what he's trying to do is excorate both articles 
and the South South governors. Incidentally, one of the South South governors, that is the governor of Delta State, is the vice presidential candidate of the Philippines. So he wants to select the man to say you cannot trust this man. Don't forget. This is a talk to what I'm saying now. This is the same person that has always said, you cannot trust a people. He, uh, uh, one guest is talking of unification, another guest is talking of division, which, of course, is really slanted interpretation to what a people said. Because he was talking to a target audience. And he even went a step further to say, I am a unifier. He even went a step further when he went to the Western States to say, I am married to your daughter. Therefore, even if you vote for me, it's like voting for one of you. He went to the East. He said, I am married to your daughter. So the issue is being put out of context. Unfortunately, the media is also catastrophizing that issue. So, Schneider is a video of moving into that article statement. But let us leave that aside. Let us go back to the 13% derivation. Now, you have a South South governor, the vice presidential candidate, Okowa. And so what he's trying to do is also to rubbish your core. What have you done with this 13% derivation that the federal government has released for you? M M Mr. Tsaya. Mr. Tsaya is the chairman of the campaign council. No, excuse me. Because of, because of time. Because of time. So he's just trying to rubbish. Now, what I'm Okay, he's trying to rubbish the South South government. That's all he's trying to do. So why does it matter? It might be a pleasant disclosure, but for intensely bad reasons. Okay, now, despite the 30% derivation, you know, oil producing states still battle high debt, uh, while uh, critical infrastructures, you know, still suffer. Should other governors, you know, declare this? You know, come out and say, this is the money we've received I, from the federal government. I, that was why I said it was a pleasant disclosure. In a that I will not go into the veracity of our focus of it. A pleasant disclosure. So the onus is now on the state governors to explain. Because... Such a man cannot be released to you without any explanation. I will not be a party to fraud. I will not. So Thank you. it is not for the government, it is incumbent on them for them to explain one if actually they receive, uh, if they receive, what have they done with the money? Pro Pro Professor Sagi. So that's one I, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. That's why I say it's a pleasant disclosure within for the contentious. Professor Fage. We, we need to wrap we need to wrap up let me quickly ask professor Fager same question do you think at this moment you know that other governors need to just open up and tell their you know those people that this is xyz amount of money that has been released you know and some of these states suffer high debt problem they've got infrastructural problem should they declare the money that was received the money they received from the federal government yes i think it, it, it is a must because democracy is about uh, accountability of uh, the leaders to the electorate. At least this issue, now that has come out, they have to come out uh, to explain it to the people. Either they deny it, if it is an allegation, or they come out with a pact. Because whatever they do now, uh, I think uh, it is now out of public domain. Um, the federal government may not sit down uh, if in case they give them and they, they say they keep quiet, I think the federal government will come out and talk about it because it is a very sensitive issue. And uh, therefore, I think it is in their own interest and in the interest of democracy for them to come out and explain Thank what really happened about the money. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Opunabo Unkotaria, uh, public affairs analyst. We've been speaking to him. And of course, our Professor Sani Fage, who is a political analyst. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.